Hi there, welcome back to the channel, thanks for joining me. So today we're continuing our journey into the great classic models of yesteryear, Matchbox in particular. Um, here we have uh, one that I haven't actually made, which is rare amongst quite a lot of the ones I've got in my collection. So this is not something I've actually constructed, so it's a bit of a journey of discovery for me too. Uh, I've got a couple of my collection, I've got um, quite a, a sort of a newer generation box, which I don't like as much. These are the ones just before they went to Revel when Matchbox were outsourcing to China and they had the, the green dot, the Grundpunkt, and this rather very white and a bit, a bit sort of more simplistic design, didn't look quite as attractive and they started messing around with the artwork a little bit. But this of course has got the, the famous Roy Huxley, I sound like I'm his sort of salesman. Roy Huxley was the artist who painted these and of course here we've got another one of his great very dramatic sort of battle scene. Um, the house on fire in the background and uh, we'll see what it says if I can read it because they have a habit of not making this very legible. Um, it says 10th Panzer Division and Infantry encounter fierce resistance um, from the 14th Army Corps assault on south of Moscow at Strainsk in the summer of 1941. Well I can't really blame them for resisting strongly but anyway Let's have a look what we got. So, typical box, nice artwork on the front. This is one of the earlier Panzers, of course. Um, and at the time, you know, it was a very advanced tank before the Tiger arrived and the Panther and the T-34 on the Russian side. On the box, it's PK-81. Sorry, better on this end. PK-81, as you can see here. Uh, on the top of the box, typically, we've got this uh, quite an interesting camo scheme. It's like a scatter pattern. Uh, very much for the sort of spring and summer camouflage, um, maybe even autumny. <laughs> Some interesting colours there, but uh, nicely painted out and showing you what it should look like painted. And then on the rear, of course, and this is one of the first generation boxes. Nineteen, well, it's 1976, so it's actually that's actually second generation, but still has the window on it. So uh, you can tell when they start introducing this style with all these different languages at the top, which previously was just English and French. Um, but anyway, you've got this beautiful uh, image of what it looks like unpainted and there's a diorama here and this looks to me like it's actually more of an Africa Corps. They're wearing caps from the Africa Corps, uh, the, the soldiers figures. So it's a bit of a crossover one where it could be Africa Corps or... Well, if you have the soldiers it has to be Africa Corps because that's the, the actual hats they've got on, not as p depicted on the front, which is clearly Russian campaign Operation Barbarossa. Anyway digressing. Let's see what's in the box. Now this is not the best quality box I've got. Um, the other one is like a mint one but it's this rather modern style which I don't really care for. So those got a bit of a bash. The rest of it's absolutely perfect. When you look at the front it looks really nice. Um, so I thought we'd go with this one anyway because it's more original so let's, let's try that and see what we've got in the box. Okay so Panzer 2. So relatively lightly armoured tank it has to be said. Uh, it was only later this time to bring out the 88mm gun and things like that, so... Oh, and here we go. So, we've got some decals, and again, got some nice decals that look reasonable condition for their age. Um, and it's actually got some Arabic writing, so that tells you that it was used in the North Africa campaign against the British. Um, the actual deck, yeah, I won't peel it off, but you can see that they will peel off with relative ease here. So that's quite nice. They'll be fine uh, to use. And as I've said before with all these matchbox kits, if you can't get your hands on one of these and you want one, you can always get the Revel version, which comes in their black um, boxes. And cost about five or six pounds. We've got the original proper purple range instructions, which are purple. And it says here, delay in the production of Germany's first main battle tank series led to the Use of the Panzer II as a stopgap vehicle to spearhead the planned offensive in the opening stages of World War II. It was developed actually as a training vehicle. Wow, okay. It does look like that, doesn't it? It looks a bit lightweight, to be honest. And the continuing programme of improvements of the successful types A and B in France in 1940. Mm. It's had a simplified construction and sped, this sped, sped up production with thicker armour giving it greater protection from enemy fire. Yes, it was. It did really well in Russia, right until the T-34 appeared, which blew it to bits, quite frankly, and was faster, more heavily armoured, and had better armour protection. So anyway, on the back, 
Declan, Declan instruction callouts, including this one, which as I say, it's North Africa. It's even got the Africa core insignia with a little palm tree there. On the inside, we've got colour details telling you how to paint it up, although it shows it as being Panzer Grey, which is very much the scheme on the front. Um, but not so much this rather nice scatter pattern we saw. So you've got German overall sand, you've got green, panzer grey, dirty black and brown and combinations therein. Here it shows the, sorry, it shows the, the small parts painting guide, so it's the black, rubber black of the tyres. Um, later in the war of course the Germans start running low on rubber and that's when the tyre gets changed from having rubber, rubberised grips around the drive wheels to having none at all, just steel wheels, but it didn't improve the performance I can tell you. Anyway, then you've got these straps on your fuel tank at the back and again more rubber drive wheels, machine gun, I think that's the mirror isn't it? Mirror? Yeah, mirror I think. And there we have it, so straight into construction then, and we've got building up, it's just a separate walled construction, it's not a bathtub hole, and you build that up and then you put on your, your wheels, which are all singles, and then there's a return idler uh, tensioning wheels at the top. Then you get your rubber band tracks together and you pop those over there and you build up your gun and it's got a separate stowage box at the back which is cool and the, the, on the machine gun, the main gun goes in does look like a tiny main gun doesn't it? I mean you can see how this was intended to be a training vehicle because it hasn't got a big you know you compare this to the Tiger, wow what a difference <laughs> um, then you put your turret in, in it goes, and you build up all your ancillary parts. It's all your stowage boxes, and uh, the front glasses goes on, spare wheel. It doesn't even have a machine gun, does it, on the front, apart from in the turret. So it's quite lightly armoured. Uh, you can see why the T-34 completely destroyed these once they arrive. And then we've got this building, which looks very cool, this sort of African type building. And then you've got your, uh, there's a decal on it apparently, with some Arabic writing. And then you've got your Africa Corps troops all in place with the tank in front of the building there. Okay, so let's have a look at the sprues and see what we got. Well, first of all, rubber band tracks, and it's a very light little tank, this, so we can't expect too much from these. Um, but they look quite scale light, they're very tiny. They're so thin, they're, they are like a rubber band actually. Well, yes, very basic stuff indeed. Okay, they're fine, but you know, nothing to get excited about. Then we've got our main big sprue here. Whoops, just move. And someone to stand up for some reason. So, what have we got? We've got some nice figures. And here we've got the North Africa Corps guy with his MP38 Schmeiser. On the other side, we've got another one of his colleagues, and he's got a stick grenade, potato masher, as they used to call them what the Americans call them, for obvious reasons, because it looks like you're about to mash up some mashed potatoes with it. You've got um, the base, obviously for the diorama, is very nicely done, as they always are, and you've got this uh, crater here, and this is where the wall of the building goes, so you look at it like that, as this is outside the front of a sort of a house. It's got track marks in it, which is very realistic. And then you've got all your wheels, so it's basically uh, your drive sprockets here, and some storage boxes here at the side, uh, idler wheels and the main sort of wheels underneath, quite small wheels on this tank and then they've got like a cap system so the wheels do turn, you just glue the cap on. Um, no, that's, sorry that's wrong, I just realised that they're so small they look like caps but they're actually these, these are the tensioning wheels across the top, to the whole tension on the top of the tracks. Yeah, it's such a small scale down tank, it's hard to take it seriously. Okay, so the second sprue, this is like a pale sandy colour, typical sort of desert yellow sand. And we've got the hull bottom, the floor of the tank. It's complete with some hatches and detail there, which is quite nice and riveting. It's quite decent actually. Then you've got the sides and the top of the hull. So this is the main feature of the tank and it's quite nicely done this, it's got some nice grills in it. Features plenty of grills and uh, plenty of engraved detail, raised detail. Um, you've got the 
grip boards here for like um, grip plates like foot plates for soldiers to stand on to jump up which is really well done I mean for the scale and the time this was made this is quite a nice nice bit of moulding I've got to say you've got more of these sort of uh, grip plate here at the front just on the mudguard so obviously soldiers would jump up on those uh, and that would aid their grip as they jumped up uh, then we've got uh, various small parts, so you've got your glasses and you've got your back, you've got your gun, and here we've got the, well, that's not the gun, is it? It's too big to be the gun. The gun's tiny. <laughs> Where is the gun, actually? That's just a good point. Is it on this sprue at all, or is it on the other sprue? I think it's on the other sprue. Yeah, it is. It is, and it's tiny. Anyway. Um, so small, I didn't even notice it when I was looking at it. There you go. So then you've got this, this piece of the wall here, um, which goes sort of around a corner, and then you've got this fantastic sort of uh, section of wall, which is really uh, well done with a shell hole through it, and that builds up obviously onto the other base, and you end up with something like something like that. So it's going to look absolutely great, isn't it? To be honest, in this particular case, I think the diorama is. Uh, it's kind of more impressive than the actual tank is, to be quite truthful. Uh, but it's it's very scale. I don't, I'm not knocking the model at all. It's just that the actual tank was quite a lightweight, you know, early early war tank. We'll we'll see more because there's a Panzer III as well, which we'll do a review on. So you'll get to see that. But as, as a kit, I think it's nice. You know, the detail on the top especially is really good. So I'd give that sort of a sort of eight out of ten again. Really, it's uh, not a lot not to like, you know. And with the lovely diorama on the back, it's going to look really good. Again, it'll animate it and make it look quite special. So there we have it. That's the Panzer II from Matchbox, PK81. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please give us a like, share and subscribe. And uh, please stay tuned because we'll be coming along in the very near future with some more similar kits. I say we've got a Panzer III and others. Definitely worth seeing. And you can actually see the evolution of the German tanks as well by looking at that and comparing. So thanks a lot and uh, hope to see you again soon. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Bye for now. Cheers.